Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for stopping back by the channel. You're looking at Jesse's Occupational Awareness Show. Really appreciate you being here. This is your first time checking out the channel. Welcome. Enjoy the previous content that I've got on here for everyone. If you're one of my repeat viewers, thanks for stopping back by. In our last video, we talked about when I got assigned to the chow hall for the first time as the inside officer working. Today, we're going to shift gears a little bit, go back to OJT, talk about the mailroom. Once you graduate the academy and you get assigned to whatever unit that you're going to be assigned to, you're going to go through an OJT process on the job training. Could be two weeks, could be three weeks, it's dependent on the unit. The mailroom is where all offender mail comes from. This is either the offender's family writing them, a friend, significant other, somebody that they've compelled to write to them. This is the hub where all the paper mail comes. Now, as we all know, email has not so much taken over, but there's a larger source of email than there is paper mail that goes on nowadays. Now, you still get your fair sum of paper mail. You've got your trash mail, your junk mail, the catalog ads that show up, bills, writing family members, pictures are still sent through it. Not very often. I haven't got a picture of my house in years, probably. Everything goes through <clears throat> digital texting. However, paper mail, or as we'll call it snail mail, because it takes a lot longer to get to, is still a very viable source. It couldn't be more so within the penitentiary. Now, at the time that I worked there, email wasn't so much a thing. They didn't have access to tablets, kiosks, things like that. I watch a lot of different podcasts on YouTube, TikTok, a couple of different other sources, and it seems like offenders nowadays have access to a lot more email kind of outings, whatever the word would be. I don't know if it's COVID-driven or if it's um, just the changes with the time, but they do a lot of virtual visits. I think they have access to kiosks where they can get email received to them. They obviously don't have computers inside their individual cells, but just like the pay phones used to be out, apparently there are computers nowadays that they can access. When I worked at the Styles in 2013 to 15, that was not the case at all. They had no access to any of that. It was phones and mail. Mailroom, it was always rocking in there. There are specific civilian employees that can hire on for TDCJ. They're designated a clerk, and then the designator from there is mailroom. There's clerk admin, different kinds. This individual hires on specifically to work in the mailroom. They work the day shift. I don't think the mailroom, I don't think it ever worked at night shift. I didn't work night shift much. During the day, though, it was rocking and rolling. The backup that they would get, OJT, you're guaranteed to do at least one shift in there, minimum once. You're going to do a lot more. I did. Other officers that are going to work in there, ones that have been involved in assaults, they're on light duty. They haven't been cleared to go back and work a building, a pod, a dorm, somewhere where an assault can occur. They could work in the mailroom. Now, an assault can take place anywhere in the penitentiary. It's just a lot less likely in the mailroom because no offenders have access to that. You'll have the workers that walk up and down the halls, pushing brooms, cleaning the floors. They don't have access to the mailroom. <clears throat> so, first time I worked in there, I was on OJT, probably day two or three. It, it was pretty early on. Officer Lewis told me and the other four individuals I was on OJT with, go ahead and report to the mailroom. It was right around the corner from where her office is. We walked in. And it was just a big room with a big table in the center of it and chairs all around it. Now, up against the walls, there were open bins and they were labeled 
one building, two building, three, four, so forth and so forth. These were where the letters would go and get sorted out to get transported to the individuals. But getting back on track, we would walk in, nobody even looked up and acknowledged us. Acknowledged us, is that how you say that? Acknowledged our presence as being in there. They were so captured, enthralled, so focused. I'm sorry, words escaped me. They were so focused on what they were doing with the mail that they weren't even concerned that we had come in. So we come in, I want to say, I said something like, Good morning, everyone. Uh, Officer Carter, OJT, here to work in the mailroom. And I don't remember who it was. Nobody even looked up at me. We'll sit down and start going through it. It was a big group of females. I think there were five or six of them just sitting in chairs. There were open chairs all around the tables. So we fanned out amongst ourselves, went and sat down at the table. And on this big table, just a huge pile of letters. Letters, envelopes, packages, just everywhere. And what these ladies were doing, they were taking the envelope and they had a letter opener. They'd slice it open, open it up, scan through the letter as quick as they could, read through it, put it back in the envelope once it was open, remove the stamp, and then send it on to a bin. They had bins sitting down on the floor with them from there, and each one of them were assigned different kinds of buildings. So, I sit down, and we're looking at the pile of letters. Nobody said anything, and I finally spoke up and said, one of y'all is going to have to tell me what to do here, uh, otherwise I'm, I'm just going to start dumping this shit in bins. Uh, there's there's got to be some kind of training with this. But he looks over at us. <sighs> All right. So she gets up and comes over to us. Now we're finally going to get a little bit of our training. She picks up a letter and shows it to us. It shows who the offender is, what their name is, TDCJ, Styles Unit, what building they're assigned to, and which number it was assigned for the building. To get a letter in there, the individual who mailed it in had to do some research. They had to know their name, their state-issued ID, what unit they were assigned to, what building they were assigned to, so they knew where to go. If it didn't have any of that, mail would get returned, it would get rejected. And then it had to have their information, where it was mailed from, where it was coming from. If it was a letter, I should say, I'm using that word interchangeably, if it was an envelope, it could have a letter inside it and a couple of pictures. Um, Polaroid, whatever kind of camera that actually developed film back then, they could get pictures. Now the content on it, as you could imagine, a lot of inmates, a lot of offenders, they would get nude photos. It was only allowed to show so much. It could show the breast area, it couldn't show any kind of genitalia, they could be clad in what kind of clothing they wanted to be wearing. They couldn't be doing lewd acts, meaning male, female, they couldn't be doing, use your imagination, they couldn't be doing any of that. If it was, those pictures were confiscated, and I don't think they were destroyed. They might have been sent back. I can't remember. I didn't work full-time in the mailroom. But I know that they were not supposed to make their way to the offender. Pictures were also checked to make sure there wasn't anything taped to them or stuck to it or glued in some way kind of form. That was another reason the stamp was removed. The stamp was removed because on the back of it there could be either some kind of acid or some kind of substance that would be in between the stamp and the actual paper where it was stuck to. So we had to check for that. So once we had gotten our rudimentary training, we covered about what can't be allowed in, can't be allowed, we covered what can and can't be allowed inside envelopes. We started digging through it. We found out a little later on, after we had made a couple of mistakes and the ladies ended up yelling at us, that we were putting the mail in the wrong bins. Once we had sort through it, you'd open up the letter, 
read through it, scan through it as best you could. Try to look for code words, try to look for any kind of gang words, security threat group as they're called in Texas, STG. Try to scan for anything that would stand out and look out of the ordinary. If we didn't see anything, fold the letter up, put it back in the envelope, look at what bin it was going, find which bin around the table it was going to, put it in that. Magazines, guys would have subscriptions to every kind of magazine, Maxima, FML, uh, nothing pornographic. I know Playboy is not necessarily pornographic. They couldn't have any kind of subscription to that. <coughs> Sorry about that. Sports. Sports magazines, sports catalogs, they were huge in there. A lot of gambling took place, a lot of bets, a lot of things revolved around betting on sports. They didn't necessarily have a lot of TV access, but they could certainly do it through magazines and catalogs. So there'd be a ton of those sent in. You had to take the book. This were a catalog. Look at it sift through it, check the cover, check the spine, make sure that nobody tried to smuggle anything into it. Not so much someone that had worked at the factory that had produced the magazine, but whoever the mail clerk was that was bringing it in. Make sure that they didn't try to smuggle anything in with that. Once we had got done with the first pile of letters, we had passed them around the table, they went into the appropriate bins, from there, once the bins started filling up, then it was time to put them into, like I talked about at first, the partitions that were behind us. Eight buildings, seven building, medical uh, segregation had its own mail room. This was for general population. We go up and we put all those, start, start, start sorting through letters, catalogs, magazines, start putting it up on the slots. Once we got done with that, Somebody from the mailroom, one who was officially assigned to work there, one of the civilian employees, had big cloth sacks. They weren't mesh. They weren't see-through. These were just big, basically a canvas sack with a drawstring on it. They would start filling those up, full of the mail, full of the letters, and it had whatever number that the building was assigned to. Once it got full, they would tie it up, set it off to the cart. The cart would get pushed off where it was. I never got the chance to pass out mail. I know that it was done on the night shift, day shift. We didn't do anything with mail. That, that, was, that was strictly a night shift responsibility. Once we got done with that pile of letters, we took a break. I went to the ODR, had a little bit of food, had some nice rot gut coffee. Tasted absolutely wonderful. Take whatever you'd think of that a truck stop has, add some motor oil to it. There you go with some TDCJ coffee. I actually learned to like it. The stuff was pretty, pretty awful, but you get institutionalized and you get used to it. Once we were done with that, went back to Officer Lewis. Officer Lewis told us mailroom still needed help. I was so over the freaking mailroom at that point. I was tired of looking at letters. I was tired of looking at nasty comments that females and dudes we're saying to these damn, I'm sorry, we're saying to these offenders, getting into it, trying not to rant. I was just tired of, of looking at that content. To, to me, personally, opinion, it was toxic. I just, I just didn't like looking at it. Went back in there, table, once again, full of letters. I don't know how often they got shipments or even where it came from. I just know the table was full of letters. Sit back down open them up, start sorting through it. Read through as best you can. Look at all the different pictures of guys, girls, no children, no teenagers, no minors. If any of that was in there, it was instantly confiscated. Bad juju, bad business. Rinse, wash, repeat. Finish going through the letters, stick it back in the bins. When I graduated the academy, my mindset at the time, I was ready to take control of the building, lay down the law, and take care of these dudes. I was ready to handle business. And now instead, here I am sitting here looking at mail, opening letters, 
reading crap that family members had written about just a lot of it was very toxic content just how bad things could be and then significant others talking about all the nasty that they want to do with such and such individual when they get out it could be pretty explicit and as they would say in the mail room it burn your eyes you just you get tired of looking at it I only had to do that a couple of times, thankfully, and any time that I got assigned to the mailroom, I was just not looking forward to it. I'm not trying to sound like a negative Nancy on this video, I just personally did not like working the mailroom. Shout out to the individuals that make that a full-time job. It does stop contraband. It really does. There was a lot of contraband that came in through the mail. It would get found in the spine of books, stuffed up in magazines, carefully folded in with letters designed to look like something. They really do their job in there. So shout out to them. That just wasn't for me. I, I didn't enjoy mailroom in the least bit. Did that a couple of times as OJT. And then once I was assigned to shift at SEG, I never went back in the mailroom again. I do my shifts on general population when I needed to, but usually full-time shift officers, ones that were off of, of OJT, we were needed elsewhere through the facility. So that's the mailroom in a nutshell. I really hope y'all enjoyed this content. Hope this was informative. Shout out to the individuals that are getting ready to make this a career. Hope it works out well. If you got questions for me that I can't answer, that I have been doing, fire away. If you liked what you saw, leave me a comment. If you didn't like it and you want to flame on it, leave me a content. I appreciate all of it. Everyone take care of yourselves. Stay safe. I appreciate every single one of you.